Welcome to Rocks Talk. It's good to see you on this Tuesday morning. I hope you're having a great one. Today we're going to talk about the, wow, Baltimore. There was a, did you hear about the bridge that crossed, collapsed? We're going to talk about that. We do have to touch on The Bachelor because the finale was last night. Love to know your feedback on that. Um, also, Chick-fil-A has recanting. They're going antibiotic with their chicken. What? Otani, I'm telling you, it's a scandal. I called it already. And we've got, he has spoken. And uh, Florida has spoken as well, too. Banning social media for the youngsters. We'll also talk about the raid. Did you see the raid on Diddy's house yesterday? You need to go back and see that video. So let's go ahead and dive in. It's good to see y'all. Um, thank you for being here with me. P.S. And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, I want to remind you that I am now live. Uh, and I'm doing this live in the mornings on TikTok. So if you follow me at Rocks Talk Show, you'll be able to just click on the little bell and get an alert when I'm live. So you're seeing the recording, and this is why it is a little bit up, more up close and personal when you're watching it here. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, when I woke up this morning, I saw Baltimore. I was like, whoa. So the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which can you, do you remember, just a little trivia, who is Francis Scott Key? How is Francis Scott Key important in our history? I know you know this. Go ahead and drop it in the comments, um, and I will let you know if you're right. Okay, so anyhow, I woke up to the bridge, major uh, bridge there, totally like collapsed because a barge hit it. And if you see these pictures, there's some things I'm like, whoa. The picture, the bridge just looks like it's tinfoil, and you have this big barge. Uh, they are looking for people in the water. I hope that they do find them. They have done some rescues. And they say it's like a major, like this is a thoroughfare. So I don't know what they're going to do. The good news is that it does not look like it was any foul play of any kind. It just, I don't know what happened to the person on the barge. I don't know what they were doing, but they got undone it. Florida is oh, is as uh, acting up. <laughs> That's my opinion. Okay, so did you hear um, Florida has now banned social media for kids 14 and under? Yeah, they said nope, no more starting next year. Um, and then if you're between the age of 14 and 15, they're saying that you have to get parental consent. So now social media platforms, and that's any platform, they didn't say the names, any platform where it, there's a lot of scrolling induced or people are inclined to just really be addicted to it. Um, now, oh, my dog just showed up. Hello, puppy. And now um, they will ban, they have to, they have to go ahead and eliminate any account for anyone who's under 14. And $10,000 fine if anyone on there happens to be under 14. I don't know how you're going to, uh, like fake IDs are a thing. They've been around for a long time. I don't know how they're going to do that. And I don't know how I feel about the fact that you're actually taking parental control away from the parents. Parents have the rights till they're 18. That's how this works, right? So I'm a little bit confused as to why if they're under 14, if they live in Florida, it's like, nope, you just can't. We've made the decision for you. I don't, I don't, I, I wonder if it's just political grandstanding just to like show like you want to be a big shot. But I, listen, could there be some, every, there's, there's, there's a yin to yang, right? There's a positive and a negative to everything. I do think that the positive um, aspects of social media outweigh the negatives, but I also think that there needs to be some type of um, control. Yes. But does the control need to come from the government? Mm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And could we be focusing on other things? Mm, probably that are more important. Yeah, probably so. Just saying. You can have social media and, and, and also get the kids out to have in-person communication. It's a thing. It's a thing that we should try. I'm just saying. Okay, enough about that. <laughs> Chick-fil-A. When I was doing radio, we used to call it the gospel bird. So listen, Chick-fil-A, Chick they came out in about 2019, I think, and said, hey, listen, we don't have any antibiotic chicken. We don't put antibiotics in our chicken, which was great because then you feel like, okay, even I'm going to go to and get my fast food, I know I'm getting chicken that doesn't have stuff in it. Well, they've come out and said, you know about that? We're going to just dial that back a little bit. We, um, it's going to be mostly non-antibiotic. I need to know what mostly means. Is it be certain types of chicken, certain types of things on your menu? Uh, I know it's not the waffle fries because there's no chicken in that, but what, what does that mean? Or is it certain locations? I need more information, Chick-fil-A, and I am a little bit annoyed that it's come to that. Because if you do some research on why antibiotics is a thing in chicken, it's to make them bigger, faster. Did anyone not see, what was that? Food Inc.? Oh my gosh, you're not see Food Inc. If you don't, yeah, if 
if you are like me and you don't like be, like chicken is not something you love to eat anyway you can watch it but if you love chicken i eat chicken but i'm a beef girl myself um if i have to choose beef all day every day um so I called this, and we're just going to keep an eye on it because I think there's something there. I don't know what the thing is. I don't. But oh, oh, Otani came out and finally spoke. So there's an issue going on. They fire, The Dodgers fired his interpreter because his interpreter transferred a large and otani size um, amount of money to the interpreter's bookie. And apparently, Otani had nothing to do with it. Otani finally came out and said, listen, I don't bet, and I don't. I, no one's betting on my behalf. So I want to know how the interpreter got that much information because you wiring money is not like a Venmo. It's not like a Zelle, right? When you're wiring large sums of money, there's some effort that has to go into it. He's got to know things. He's got to have access to stuff. And I would think that there's some type of like, like there was a lot of money. It was a lot of money. So I'm curious as to what's going on there, but we're going to keep an eye on it because I'm telling you, there's a story there. There's a story. Um, Diddy, did you see the video? Diddy's LA house got raided. And when I say raided, I mean, they had the helicopters above. I mean, they had the, the, the FBI or whomever was in there just pulling stuff out and people out. Why? Rhymes with Max trafficking, allegedly. <sighs> oh, that is not good. That is not good at all. I don't know what's going on there. I do not know. Um, but wow, it's it's weird to see someone that was on TV for so long and, and was pulling out the hits and whatnot. And we it is not the first time. We don't know what celebrities are really like, obviously. Um, I if he did it, it that's horrible. And I hope that um, hope they saved a couple. It's just not good. I don't know the details, obviously, but the video. Now, what last I saw, there was no report of whether he was in the house when it was raided or not. So I don't know. But they raided it. I, you think you know someone. I don't know him. But you think you've watched enough of, of making of the band. Do you remember when he was with J-Lo? Loved that time. You think you know someone. And then you hear all these things. It just keeps on coming out. Coming out. You're like, oh, my goodness. Mm. Alas. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, yes, The Bachelor. So if you don't want to be spoiled on The Bachelor finale last night, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for being here. But if you do want to know what happened or if you want to discuss, they've been touting this Bachelor finale as like something that's never happened before. And it made it look like Joey like gets left at the altar or something, which how could that be possible when Joey is literally like the best Bachelor, the favorite Bachelor of all time? So although that would make an interesting story, they'd have to do another season with him like right then, right away. So what was the thing? The thing turned out, you have the two, fin the two finalists, the two final women. You have Daisy and Kelsey. And Daisy starts to realize her spidey senses are getting to her. And she's realizing that in what, what Joey's saying and not saying, she's not the one. So she goes over, knock, 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 to her friend's room, which let me just say, when you're on a reality show, you don't you don't have free reign to just walk over. You can't just go wow, I'm getting a hamburger or something. I remember when I was on The Apprentice, my dad was in town. He's like, "Hey, Roxanne, I'm here. I want to come by and see you." I'm like, "Dad, I can't. Like, you you don't have autonomy." So she clearly got permission to, from production to do that. She knocks on Kelsey's door and says, "I need to know how have your last few days been." And Kelsey tells her, "It's been great." And Daisy's like, "Mine not so much." And so she realizes she's not the one, and she realizes Kelsey is the one. So they actually travel to the rose ceremony together. When we talk about girls, girls, that's a girl's girl. You get me? Like that is a moment in time where it's like caring about each other, even though there's this love and this guy in the middle of it. They go together. Of course, Daisy goes first. She tells him, I know I'm not the one. They do the breakup. She comes back. She gives Kelsey a huge hug and tells her her mother is looking down on her from heaven and is so proud of her. Are you kidding me? Like Daisy I was impressed with you. I have to say, this was the episode that you impressed me. Very impressed. Anyhow, of course, Kelsey gets engaged to Joey. Happiness. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Uh, they ask Daisy, okay, Daisy, are you going to, do you, like, are you looking for love? You want to be our next bachelorette? Because you kind of set yourself nicely for it. She said, no. She said, it's been a, a wild year, wild time. I'm finally feeling healthy. I'm not ready yet. 
And she says no. So the question is, who's going to be the bachelorette? Now, it was down between definitely Daisy and Maria. Maria was like the the pe- people's choice. And Daisy was like um, the quintessential bachelorette. So what were they going to do? Well, they have the beautiful, wonderful Charity Lawson come out to make that announcement. And she announces that it is Jen. Surprise. Someone totally different. Um, who was has been on the who was on the show? Who is now the first Asian American bachelorette? Really, the first Asian American lead in the in Bachelor history. It is about time. Let's be real. And so she's coming out. You could tell she was nervous, and I would be nervous too because if you know you were eliminated weeks ago, a b, you know they love Daisy, and you're like, and it's like surprise, it's me, and I'm not Maria. That's tough. So I could tell she was nervous. I'm rooting for her. I think it's going to be good, and um, they'll make it good. And I'll be watching it. So there it is. So that is the end of that. The Now the big question, and they're filming Filming starts this week. Allegedly they're going, um, according to reality, see if they're going internationally. The big question, I think, is this. The big question is, who is the Golden Bachelorette? And I'm sad to say I think it's going to be Leslie because they keep showing the four women they sh- they keep showing, the Golden Bachelor Bachelor's women that they – keep bringing out she's the she's the most obvious candidate the others I would be happy with but I don't think it's going to be them which kind of bums me out because yeah anyway I don't know if I'll watch I'll watch but I'll begrudgingly watch (laughs) all right to my friends in um in the tube world last thing you know which I probably should have mentioned first is this I've been touting that if you're on my email list, there's something big coming out today. And the thing is that now Flowdesk allows us to share email templates, which means, and I sent it out this morning, so check your email. I can now send you a template that literally, almost like a Canva template, but an email where all you need to do is customize the wording, maybe change the colors if you like, and you're Gucci, and you can go and send it off. This is super exciting. It's something that I've been asking them for for over a year as a social media net, uh, networking coach. It's important to grow your list. And so I'm thrilled that it's out there and you're available to get it. If you don't have access to it, um, if you're not on my list, just make sure you go to rockstalks.co and um, you can get on the list there or just DM me, message me, put it in the ch- like, ch- drop it in the chat and I'll get it to you because it is so good. And there's more of that to come. If you think that email is not a thing, I want you to realize it most definitely is a thing. And it's a great way for you to connect with your audience on the regular. Hi, Ashley. So when they brought those free templates out, I'm like, this is wonderful. So uh, they, I couldn't tell anyone. They told us last week and that was happening. And they're like, don't tell anyone until Tuesday. So I was finally able to announce it today. And then my email list send off one. And there's gonna be more good things r- around that. So stay tuned for that. Super exciting. Uh, it's a big win in the world of just connecting and growing your business. If you're someone who wants to have, whether it's a side hustle or a full on business that you want to make sure that you're doing and cultivating, you have got to have an email list. It's just, it's not even a should I or will I, it's a, why don't you? And so I understand that a lot of times when people are like, I know how to do need, need to write emails. You don't know what to write. It's going to help monetize and make you the dinero. And I've actually created a year's worth of emails that will help you with that. So what I'm really excited about is now I can give them to you in template form. So you're good to go rather than like a Google doc. So you've got them and they're boom, bam there. So if, again, if you're not on my list, let me know so I can get you on there so you can grab it. All right, y'all. It's so good to see you. I'm going to see you later today. We're going to be talking about, you know, I knew what it was going to be. I think we're going to have a little pajama party, maybe. I'm going to show you some new items that I've gotten from, I think we're going to pajamas. We're going to talk a little bit about some um, menno.